Yep. Yep. You don't mind speaking yeah. up too. Sure, that's a little loud. Uh, Ed Gonzalez, Harris County Sheriff, joined here by Lieutenant Jeff Eastagen with our Harris County Sheriff's, Sheriff's Office Marine Unit. A uh, little after 2 p.m. today, uh, with the assistance of some uh, expert divers, we were able to gain access into the cab of the truck, the sleeper compartment, and we were able to locate and uh, extract uh, an adult male that was inside. Uh, he was deceased. We were able to get him out of the water uh, and uh, coordinated with the Institute of Forensic Sciences with the Harris County uh, Sheriff's, I mean, well, the Harris County uh, in the, uh, Institute of Forensic Sciences. Uh, again, a very sad outcome uh, from a crash that began early yesterday morning, uh, but we are relieved that we'll be able to bring closure to a family and that they can have a proper burial. Uh, as I mentioned yesterday, it's been a very complex crash from where the truck landed. The truck basically jackknifed with the front portion of the truck into mud and silt that was there. So the compartment was completely filled with mud. And so it really took a collaborative effort uh, being led by uh, Lieutenant East Hagen with our Marine unit, as well as partners with uh, Baytown uh, Police, the Coast Guard, Houston Police, you know, and as well as the professional expertise of a private firm, uh, TNT, out of Galveston, that really did amazing work uh, to come out here. Our first priority has been to locate the driver uh, initially, obviously, you know, with uh, hope of being able to find someone alive, but we knew that the chances would be slim. But nonetheless, we were true to our mission to locate the, the driver. Uh, and then the secondary part of that will be to extract the truck from the water. Uh, we anticipate uh, and we're coordinating efforts right now to bring very large machinery that will be in place by tomorrow morning. And we expect that operation to take place around 9 a.m., more or less, when the truck will be lifted uh, from the water. But we had a lot of uh, different challenging aspects to this, including that the truck landed almost uh, on top of, uh, of the perimeter of a Superfund site that's highly toxic. So we did not want to disturb the caps that are in place there that would then perhaps spill into the, the water on the San Jacinto River. So we had a lot of different things that had to go into our calculus, uh, but we are relieved that we were able to retrieve the body a little bit past 2 p.m. this afternoon. And again, our work is not finished out here. Uh, our traffic investigators are still conducting uh, parts of, of their follow-up investigation, and then the additional parts will be to extract the, the, the truck itself and the container sometime tomorrow morning. So uh, we appreciate everybody's patience and updates to the community uh, over the last few days. We haven't because we turned the body over to the Harris County Medical Examiner's Office and we want to make sure that they make the positive identification. I will say that uh, we've been uh, in cooperation and in conversations with, uh, with uh, Rich Logistics, uh, the owners of the truck. They've been very cooperative and helpful in what we did today with the operation. So I want to commend them as well for stepping up. Uh, we, uh, I've talked to some family members of who they believe may be a possible driver. You know, we can't confirm that because that'll be up to the medical examiner's office to do. Uh, obviously, they've been very shaken by this experience. Uh, you know, I've tried to communicate as much as I could. Uh, you know, obviously respecting our investigation and maintaining the integrity of that, uh, and also being respectful of not getting ahead uh, of something and, and identifying the wrong person. Because, but uh, does the body seem to be consistent with that of an approximately 60-year-old male? Um, it's. Uh, it appears to be an adult. Hispanic mill uh, at first glance, but again, just due to the condition of the body, that's hard to pinpoint. And I just, you know, I've, I've worked in this business a number of years to say, we just gotta be cautious with that. But it appears to be an adult male. It's very likely that it was the driver that was supposed to be in there. 
Uh, so we don't have any other reason to believe it would be somebody else, but that information would have to come from the company or from the family, perhaps. And, oh. Do you think that because of the money situation, he was, he was not able to get out? It, 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 yeah, yeah. I'll let uh, Lieutenant Nieshagen to talk to some of it. Just from what, that one of the reasons it's been so difficult to extract them was just the complexity of how that truck was literally jackknifed and dodged deep into that that mud and silt, which makes it very difficult. We're not navigating water; we're not actually navigating uh, uh, mud. We did pry through there yesterday. There were no signs of life, so we were in that same section. We were just not in a position to retrieve an actual body, but we did explore that, that section yesterday and didn't find signs of light yesterday. But Lieutenant Eshagen, I want to commend him and his team. He's been leading our effort and coordinated. It's been very complex and difficult. Uh, Lieutenant, if you could step up. What was the, what was the sort of uh, attitude or angle of the cab? Was it flat, just sunken in there, but still upright? The, the cab is, is sitting at an angle about a 30 degree angle to the, the front of the rig and it's it's nose down in the mud with the passenger door up and the driver's door down. It's pretty much uh, impossible for us to get in that truck yesterday. Uh, today we we brought in a team of professionals today and they were able to make, gain access to it. And how were you, I'm sorry, I was no, going to ask you, you said that your team of professionals, uh, specifically who were they and what did they do that was different than yesterday? It's the dive team from TNT. Okay. Uh, they're, they specialize in recovery of sunken vessels and, and vehicles so they they've got more experience with doing this type of stuff especially in this type of environment where we've got multiple multiple problems such as the bridge the location of the truck on the bridge we didn't want the truck to roll over while we were working on this because they're going to be having to recover it having them come in and, and assist with this was was the best course of action we could take and what is involved? I mean, you need really heavy equipment to dislodge this thing and pull it out of there? Or? Yes, yes. We're, TNT, TNT, as I said, specializes in this type of recovery, so they've got the equipment necessary to do this type of lift. We explored yesterday of removing it using a heavy duty wrecker. We'd have to drag it out using a heavy duty wrecker. With this location next to the Superfund site, we didn't want to do that because we didn't want to disturb that cab. I, I couldn't hear you. I'm sorry. TNT out of Galveston is going to be pulling the truck out. TNT was not involved in getting the body out. I they did. Yes. Oh. TNT was involved in recovering the body today. Okay. They will also be doing the recovery of the vehicle and the trailer tomorrow. The reason we've got them here to do that is because they've got the proper equipment to do the heavy straight up lift that we need them to do. Yes. The position of the cab is about 30 degrees off the front of the the truck uh, of the trailer, and it is nose down in the mud. It is buried all the way up to the windshield of the vehicle, and then some. The cab has filled with mud, so we've got a a very heavy load that we've got to lift along with the suction of it being stuck in that mud. And we needed a company that's got the capacity to raise that weight straight up and out and load it on something else to get it out of the area. Isn't there concern that it won't stay intact during that operation? There is, but TNT is professionals. They know what they're doing with this. They logistically have done this type of work before. They're the best case scenario for getting this thing out intact. What about the load? We, we said they're plastic containers, right, in, in the, uh, nothing that's, uh, I know it's nasty yeah. water as it is, but nothing yeah. that's hazardous. There's nothing anything. nothing hazardous in, in cargo. Uh, it, we're told they're plastic uh, crates of some kind. Um, and again, you know, they've been game planning with Lieutenant East Hagen, uh, TNT, uh, and others to see the best course of action, not only today, tomorrow, because our accident investigators also still need to complete some of their follow-up. So it is, it's going to be a very uh, complicated but interesting exercise tomorrow when you consider the weight of that container, probably over 30,000 pounds that's going to be lifted, uh, you know, and so the, that we're bringing massive equipment in from Galveston to do that. It, it's going to take uh, hours, but eventually it'll get here by early morning hours, and we anticipate by sometime around 9 a.m. 
uh, that operation will be uh, in, in full effect. And that will be a, I'm sorry, oh. that will be a 5910 uh, westbound? There shouldn't be a yeah. real effect to traffic. Um, obviously, people will, will, will be watching as they go by. That would be the only effect that we'd have on traffic, I think. Um, all of this is going to take place in the water below. Uh, it's going to take time. It's scheduled to start early in the morning. It may not be completed until this time tomorrow evening. So, Sheriff, and, and could you remind us just one more time about the, I know it also kind of started around 3.40 yesterday morning. Could you kind of recap what happened and what led to this? Yes, um, at approximately um, 3.30 a.m., there was a vehicle uh, that was involved in some type of, uh, of accident that occurred on the freeway. There were two individuals. One was 18, the driver. The passenger was 23 years old. Uh, they were going inbound into downtown and apparently got into some type of fender bender with some type of commercial truck. Uh, the, the truck fled the scene. We don't know exactly who struck who. I, I, don't, I don't know those specific details. But the vehicle got spun around. One of our uh, deputies arrived on the scene to immediately investigate and, and offer assistance and help. Uh, at which time the 18-wheeler that we've been, um, obviously, uh, that's been discussed here, uh, I think clipped or, or struck or, or barely avoided that, that initial accident, quickly veered to, to its left, is my understanding, and then trying to out, uh, overcorrect, overcorrect it and just shot straight out from the, um, from the freeway, from the guard, through the guardrail, which, guard which is very small, uh, shot straight into the water and embedded and, and got entrenched inside the water, which we're not talking. So it's very uh, it's very much a miracle that, that no one else got hurt because you had two individuals that thankfully were out of the vehicle. Our deputy was out of the vehicle. And so those are three individuals that were basically right on top of when all this happened and went down. So, uh, you know, I mean, it, maybe as a last heroic act, that driver in attempting to strike anyone else, try to maneuver out of the way and, uh, you know, ended up losing their life as well. So it's a dangerous job. We have a lot of respect for professional truck drivers, uh, you know, and uh, it's just a very tragic situation when they lose their life when they're just working as well. So again, our condolences go out to the family and, you know, to all the team involved. They, they've been, you know, working around the clock with different facets to this and uh, job well done. They stayed focused on the mission and we got the job done as best we could. Is the structure of the compromised uh, is working on that. We don't think it's compromised to the point that it won't be, uh, you know, uh, able to be utilized. But they still obviously have crews out here. They're going to have to do some some things there as well. Uh, at minimum, at maximum, right now, it just appears to be one lane that shut down westbound going into town. Uh, we don't think anything else was compromised, but that's a call for text You think that's enough guardrail right there? I personally do not think so. There was a previous accident a couple months back where a young girl, a child, I think, lost her life. Um, there's a, an actual brick, um, you know, barricade in the middle of the roadway. While they would not have been able to stop uh, a semi that size with that type of force, I think for a vehicle, uh, potentially it could at least redirect it. Um, but again, that's not Are my call. I'm not. The outer or the uh, well, the, 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 I'm talking about the outer one because the outer one just seems to be knee high. Yeah. Yeah. And so again, I'm not an engineer. It's it's not my lane, but uh, it's definitely a concern. And I, I'm told that over the years, historically, there's been a number of, of major crashes through there. And I remember the one uh, just months ago with a young girl because that one stay, stays in my mind. You know, I don't know if those things could be prevented with a concrete guard, but I know there's one in the center uh, lane but not one in the outer lane when, where this went out. But again, those things will be investigated, and, you know, that's Thank you. Thank you. further Elsie, discussion. can you spell your uh, first and last yeah. name for us? In the microphone, please. Yeah. In the microphone. Jeff, J-E-F-F, -F, East Hagen, E-A-S-T-H-A-G-E-N. He's a lieutenant with our Marine Unit, Harris County Sheriff's Office. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks. Lieutenant. Thanks, Sheriff. Thank you, Lieutenant. Thank you, Sheriff. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you all so much. Sure. Uh, I was Thank you.